All right, this is um, Dr. Morton recording uh, the lecture for uh, Wednesday, the 11th of November. And uh, so here's the syllabus, and uh, here we are, 11th of November, and we're going to talk about Unit 15. Um, so remember, there is homework 10 due tonight, and that's because we uh, originally homework 9 was due on Friday, but we pushed it back um, to, to Monday because there was a mistake uh, on the turn-in link uh, on Blackboard. So anyway, so that's what happened. So, But don't forget you have to do homework 10 for today. All right, and then, uh, and then we'll just continue. Uh, then the next homework uh, that will be due on Monday, I believe, uh, after, after the one tonight. And then uh, that's 11, and you just have 12 and 13, and you're done. Uh, and the last few aren't aren't really too bad anyway okay so um, good all right so I'm going to talk about unit 15 and um, so unit 15 uh, we're going to talk about two things uh, we're going to talk about how to reduce st state tables and we're also going to talk about uh, state assignment A state assignment is where we code the state with flip-flops and there, there's a number of ways to do this, but one of the interesting things is uh, just by changing, let's say you have, let's say you have uh, eight states, okay, and you're going to use three flip-flops to encode them. There are a, a, a very large number of ways you can do that, and that are that are what are considered non-equivalent, um, which means of the three of those several hundred ways, um, let me, I'll pull that up and show you exactly what that is. I don't. If you look here uh, at the text, table 15-14, you'll notice that uh, when we have, so minimum number minimum number of state variables, okay, uh, number of states. So uh, if you have two states, you only need one flip-flop. But if you have three states, you need two. If you have four states, you need two. But if you have five states, then you need three, and you need three all the way up to eight states. At four states, at nine states, you need four, and so forth, all the way up to 16. And here are the number of distinct assignments. Now, this is not the number of assignments. Uh, the number of assignments is very much greater than this. This is the number of assignments where you can show that it, uh, that it actually could make a difference in how much hardware it takes to implement the design. And so for, uh, for three and four states, there are only three different non-equivalent assignments. And you, you probably should investigate both of these. I mean, all three of these. Uh, you just need to work the problem three times, and that'll show you, um, when you work the problem three times, that'll show you, uh, based on the way you assign the states, uh, um, how it changes the hardware. And it, and it could be that one of those three ways would be dramatically simpler or significantly simpler than the other two ways. And if that's the case, then obviously you'd be crazy not to use that way. Now, uh, what happens when you get uh, five, six, seven, eight? Well, notice just for five states, there's 140 non-equivalents. For six, there's 420, and for seven and eight, there's 840. 840. So you can see when you when you just pop up a little bit past four, the numbers just go up dramatically, and and then for nine states, there are 10 million non-equivalent assignments. The actual number of assignments is much larger than this. I think in the the case of uh, uh, three and four states, there's actually 24 different assignments, but only three are distinct, and the others are just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but but three of them give you different outcomes. Um, okay, so like for instance, you might have a flip-flop A, and in two of the equivalent assignments, uh, there might be three gates on the input for, for A, but one on the input for B, and then in another assignment, there might be one on the input for A, but three on the input for B. Okay, so those those didn't change. There was no change in the in the in the actual hardware. It's the same. It's just rearranged, uh, and so that's that's for five states. That's 140 unique ways. That not not to mention the the, the number of ways that are that are 
that uh, are uh, equivalent as far as the hardware. And you have to be able to figure out what those 140 unique ones are, so you can only try those. You don't have to try the whatever that very large number is. Uh, I, I'm sure it's huge because for three and four states, it's it's three uh, non-equivalent, 24 potentially non-equivalent and equivalent. Anyway, you get the idea. Very large numbers here, and that is why uh, we have. Unless you're doing three or four, you basically just have to use guidelines. Okay, so, all right. So we're going to look at this state assignment. We look at equivalent state assignments uh, for three and four. We'll look at one hot state assignments. And uh, uh, the only way you can really do this uh, brute force thing uh, is where you, you have three or four states and you can try all three of them. Otherwise, unless you want to try 140 different solutions, uh, for five, and if you have six or seven, you're looking at 540 or five something, and then for eight, you were looking at eight, or no, seven and eight, you were looking at 850. So it's just crazy, right? Uh, I already forgot what it was. Let, let me look. 420 for six, and 840 for seven and eight. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's do it. So first off, there are two different, well, there are two different things we do for state reduction. One, we can eliminate redundant states, and two, we can do equivalent states. You can you can look for equivalent states in in any state table, but you and you may not find them, but you can look for them. But redundant states, you're only allowed to really consider those in a certain class of problems. And I mentioned this before, but that's the class of problems where you where you input a fixed number of values and then the network resets. So that's what we did. Uh, that's what we did with the uh, BCD to XS3. Uh, yeah, was that the? Uh, no, that was with the the second one where we were looking for two targets, one zero zero one and uh, zero one zero one. Anyway, uh, because because this redundant states requires you to have a fixed number with a reset, then uh, then that that last problem we looked at. Uh, where we read in four values and reset, four values and reset, then that's where we could look for redundant states. And indeed, we found some just by inspection, really. Um, equivalent states, so you can you could look at any um, you could look at any solution, and you might find some equivalent states. Okay. Oh, so and then uh, so that's what we're going to cover. All right. And again, we want to reduce state. We want to reduce our state table because it may decrease the number of flip-flops required, which may greatly simplify our solution. Um, so if you have a problem that reads in a fixed number of inputs and resets, then what you should do is look for rows in the state table that have the same outputs and the same next states. And if you find any like that, then you can, you can consider them redundant, and you can substitute in one of them for both of them. And then you can inspect it again, and if you see some more, you can eliminate those. So uh, you keep iterating this process until you, until you until you don't eliminate any more states, in which case you're done. All right. So here's an example. So uh, now this is a weird example because they used letters for the states instead of for the flip flops, and uh, I guess for the flip flops I don't know what they use, but anyway. All right, well, I guess we don't really, we're still doing state table here. All right, so we have state A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, and P. There's no O. All right, so the first thing you do is inspect this. Do you see any examples where we have, where for a particular state, you have the same next states and the same outputs? Well, okay, let's look at H. We have state A and A for X equals zero and A for X equals one, and the outputs are zero, zero. What about I? We have A for X equals zero and A for X equals one, and the outputs are zero, zero. What about J? Well, we have A and A, but our outputs are different. Okay, so that, that won't work, but H and I are redundant. What about K? Yeah, A, A and A and an output of zero, zero. What about L? Well, we have an output of one there. That's that's like J. So so we can we can eliminate L based on J. What about M? N and P, they're all the same, and they're the same as H. 
So we can eliminate then a whole bunch of states. We can eliminate uh, I, K, M, N, and P. And what we do is wherever we had an I, a K, an M, an N, or a P, we substitute H in instead. And then we can also eliminate uh, J is here, but L is the same as J. So we can eliminate L. And wherever we wherever we find uh, an L, we'll have to substitute in J. All right, so let's look at this. So we put a G, uh, an H in for the I. We put an H in for the K. We put an H in for the N. Put an H in for the M. And for the P. And then uh, for the, uh, we can put a J in for our L. Yeah, so now what we do is we inspect it again. Now we've we've changed some things. Maybe we can find some redundant states. Well, what about D that's H and H and G now that's H and H? And what about E that's J and H and F that's J and H? Yeah, so we can eliminate F and substitute it and substitute in D. We can eliminate G and, sub and substitute in D. So we do that. So we eliminate F. We eliminate G, and we substitute in uh, E for F and D for G. Now let's inspect it again. Uh, and now it doesn't look like there's any situation where we have the same next dates and the same outputs. Because we have DE here, ED there. They're the same, but they're switched. So that, that doesn't work the same. And D, H, and H. That looks like we're done. All right, very good. So now we're done. So now when we eliminate all the ones we've crossed out, we're gonna have, we're gonna go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, sorry, one, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we've, we've gone from 15 states to, uh, we've eliminated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We've eliminated 8. So we only have 7 states left, which is great, because now we can get by with 3 flip-flops. All right. So so this is this redundant state is just the simplest case of equivalent states. And it's, it is unique to the case where the circuit resets after a fixed number of inputs. Yeah, so you can uh, you can you can still apply the equivalent. Uh, uh, you can still see if you can find equivalent states by using an implication table. Okay, now we're going to look at an implication chart. Um, so, um, and we could go back and do that problem we did from the last chapter, where we had the two targets and we went down the two paths. And we just kind of looked at it. So if you start with the unreduced state table, which which had uh, nine states, then so l looking at this, do you see any states that have uh, the same next states and the same outputs? Well, let's see. Eight is S0, S0, and 0, 0. And uh, six is 0, 0. Uh, oops, that's got a 1. Um, let's see. S0, S0. All right, how about 7? Is 8? Oh, 6. No. Um, S0, S0. S0, S0. Okay, well, for sure, 6 and and uh, 3 are the same, right? 6 and 3 are the same. And so so we can cross out, we can cross out uh, 6, and then, and then 5, then 5 and... Uh, oh, five and two are the same. Five and two are the same. So we so we cross out six and we cross out five, and wherever we have uh, five, we're going to write in uh, two, right? And wherever we have 
yeah so i guess here's here's what we do first sorry so so first we eliminate six and three so we put three in where we have six so that changes this one to a three and that crosses this one out and then we can cross this one out because now we have s5 and s2 are the same three and eight and zero zero three and eight and zero zero so then we cross out five and we substitute in uh wherever we have five we put in two so we can so we can eliminate those two states and uh and now we have instead of uh nine we only have seven all right and that's what we did in the other problem we just did it by inspection okay um so now we're going to look at an equivalent at an implication table all right so here's a new problem again we're using now we're using small letters for our states um, so anyway the book just kind of shuffles around here so here's what the implication table looks like I, i'm going to kind of draw this because it's it's it, it it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense so let me pause and i'll get this started and then i'll come right back oops Okay, so now, uh, so I've, I've drawn the implication table. Now, so here's the thing. So the way we're going to do this, uh, I'll, try and, I'll try and see if we can see both of these things. But the, uh, the, the implication table, uh, is, is this is it right here. Only I drew one, and I'm going to try and fill in some things, and we'll, we'll hopefully make sense out of it. Notice that, that what we're going to do is we have, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H states so we have we have everything but a on this axis and everything but uh h on this axis and that's because we don't need to compare a to a or b to b or c to c or d to d or e to e to a f to f so we just need to compare a to b c d e f g h and b and 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 then since we're, we've already compared a to b we don't have to compare b to a Okay, so then we just have to, uh, to compare B to C, D, E, F, G, H. And we just have to compare to C and so forth. And that gets us all the possible combinations. Okay, now, uh, so that's how the implication table set up. Now, the, so I'm going to switch this and I'm going to uh, show you the implication table I just drew. And, um, and I'm going to make this a lot bigger. Okay. Let's see, it did something weird. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh. Golly, what in the world is going on? Oh, I know what's going on, but it's driving me crazy. Okay, I don't know. Okay. All right, let's try it again. Um, sorry, stupid thing. Uh, it just kind of goes batty after a little while. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, now. Okay, so, and I'm going to, maybe I'll switch this in like this. Okay, this isn't too bad. All right, so let's go. So here's my implication table right there. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. And all right, perfect. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compare down here. Um, let's get this forward just a little bit. Now you can see the bottom ones. So I'm going to compare A to B. Now, if we look over here, if A equals B, what would have to be true? Well, first, the outputs have to be the same. Well, in this case, they are. They're both zero. So that, that means it's possible. D would have to be equal to F. So I'll write that in d equals f and uh, c would have to equal h c equals h now what about uh, comparing a to c well since they have different outputs that's not going to work so i might as well just go ahead and cross cross this one out and while i'm at it uh, c and uh, c and b are also not going to work so i'll just cross this one out too because they have different outputs. All right, what about A and D? Well, A and D, A and D, so that would mean that D has to equal A, or 
A has to equal D. Well, that's already what I'm asking, so I'm not going to write that one in because that, that's redundant. But it does mean that E would have to equal C. Okay, so E equals C. And then, uh, what about, what about then, uh, yeah, so, and then, uh, what about then um, A and E? Well, E has a different output, so that can't be. What about E and F? F has a different output, so that can't be. E and G, possible. If that's true, B equals D, or B equals D, and uh, and H equals C. All right, what about H and uh, A? No, there you have different outputs, so that's not possible. All right, then what about B and C? We already said they different have outputs. B and D? B and D are possible. So if B is equal to D, A equals F, and... Um, so A equals F and uh, E equals H. What about uh, B and E? B and E have different outputs, so that's not going to work. B and F, different outputs. B and G, so that's possible. And if that's true, then for B and G, uh, B has to equal F. And H has to equal H. Well, H does equal H, so that's okay. So, so H equals H, so we'll just ignore that because that's true. All right, and then um, what about B and H? B and H, no, that's not possible because they have different outputs. Okay, how about C and D? C and D, that's not possible because they have different outputs. How about C and E? That is possible. So if C equals E, then, then C equals E. Oh, well, that's the same thing we're asking, so we, we ignore that. So then it's uh, A and A has to equal D. A has to equal D. All right, how about C and F? C, C and F, uh, it's possible. So in the case of C and F, we have uh, E equals F. and uh, D equals B. All right, how about C and G? C and G isn't possible because they have different outputs. And C and H. Uh, so uh, C and H would be E and C, or C it has to equal E, and uh, G has to equal D, or D equals G. All right, now for D, D and E. Uh, D and E is not possible. D and F is not possible because they have different outputs. D and H is not possible because they have different outputs, but D and G is possible. So D and G, um, D and G. So that would be A equals B and E equals H. A equals B and E equals H. And then finally, uh, how about E and F? E and F is possible. E and G is not possible. And E and H is possible. So if E and F are the same, then, uh, then C equals F. And uh, A equals B. And if E and H are equal, C equals C, so that's C equals C, so that's ignored. And um, again, E and H, and A equals G. And finally, uh, what? Let's see. Well, we have F, uh, F, and uh, F and G not possible. F and H. So if F and H, uh, F, F has to equal C. F equals C, and uh, B equals G. And then finally, G and H are not possible because they have different outputs, so we will cross that out.
Okay. Now, here we are. Okay, so so now what do we do? Well, now we go back and we look and we see if we have invalidated any of these existing things. And it uh, looks like to me that, uh, so DNF, uh, I can barely see that, right? Let me get brighter. I don't know if that'll help or not. So could DNF be true? Well, here's D and here's F, uh, here's F and D. Okay, no, D and F cannot be true. We already have eliminated those. So this one can't be true. All right, how about E and C? E and C, possible. All right, how about um, B and D? B and D, B and D, possible. How about H and C? H and C, possible. All right, and then how about D and B? D and B, um, so D and B is, um, so we have to have A and F, so that's A and F, not possible, so this is gone. Uh, how about how about B and G? So B has to equal F, whereas B equals F, nope, not possible, so this one's gone. All right, how about A and D? A and D, possible. How about C and F? C and F, so E has to equal F, E and, uh, sorry, E and F, possible. And how about D and B? D and B, not possible. We've already crossed that one out. So now that one's gone. And how about uh, C and H? So C equals E, C equals E, possible. And D equals G, D equals G, possible. All right, and then how about uh, how about D and how about so A and B, A and B, A and B, not possible. So this one's gone, and actually that means this one's gone because we were depending on D and G being possible, but it's not. Um, and then how about uh, E and F? So C equals F, C and F, nope, not possible. So that one's gone. And how about A and G? A and G, possible. And then how about F and H? Okay, so F equals C. C and F, nope, this one's gone. All right, so now let's go back through again. How about uh, E and C? E and C? E, uh, uh, e and C, possible. How about uh, A and G? Well, B equals D. B and D, nope, we've already crossed that one out, so now that one's gone. These are all gone. Uh, how about uh, C, and, C and E? Well, does, can A equal D? A, it's possible. All right, so we'll leave that alone. Uh, this is gone. How about E and H? So can A equal G? A, nope, that's already crossed out, so that's gone. And that's everything. So now the only thing we're left with, let's do it one more time. The only thing we have is we have this one and this one. Everything else is crossed out. Can E equal C? So uh, E and C, yes. And then can A equal D? A and D, possible. All right. So now we can't, we're not, we don't, we didn't cross anything else out. So we're done. So what we would conclude at this point then is that that uh, that we we are postulating that 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 uh, that uh, D and A sorry that D equals A and we're also postulating that C that E equals C or C equals E so that so those two states then could be eliminated and uh, and so we can substitute in. Uh, a for D, and we can substitute in C for E. And that will reduce our states, uh, and that's all we can do. Everything else was uh, not possible. Hey, baby. Okay. So that pretty, much, that pretty much shows you the implication chart. Okay. So it's a little bit tedious, but that's how you can do it. All right. So where did my thing go? Uh here.
Okay. All right. So we already talked about this. So I, I want to mention this. Uh, something just to file away in your brain. So if you're doing a sequential design and you have three states or four states, then you can check out all possible non-equivalent assignments. There are 24 possible assignments, but but of the 24, only three really make any difference. And and uh and so and so here are the three non-equivalent assignments. It, it's probably it's it's doesn't matter whether you th it's exactly the same for three states or four states. Except if you do three states, then you have don't cares, which could change the, which could change the outcome. Uh, so it's probably better just to memorize it for four states, and then if you have three states, you can whatever. So so basically, the non-equivalent assignments are straight binary order 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 3, 2, 0, 3, 1, 2. So you just take the three and you move it up. And those are the those are the four those are the three non-equivalent assignments for three or four states. And here it's just zero one two, zero one three, zero three one. And these are don't cares. So that's 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 how you can do it. So it's good to remember that. And if you're doing a problem and you need to pinch the last modicum of space out uh, that you can, then you can consider these two, uh, you can consider these three non-equivalent assignments and see which one gives you less hardware. Now you also have to take into consideration the don't cares, and it's possible that without the don't cares one might do better, but with the don't cares a different one might do better. So you have to look at the whole thing. Okay, um, now, so when we get to five, six, seven, or more states, we're pretty much stopped. We're pretty much done with doing the brute force, trying all possible non-equivalents. So, uh, so what we're going to do instead, we're going to follow some rules. Now, to follow the rules, you have to understand a concept here, and I'm going to explain it here in just a second. So, so we talk about we talk about uh, adjacent assignments. And, uh, and that's, so what do I mean by JSON assignments? Well, okay, so, um, okay, so, um, so one thing we can, uh, well, okay, I, I thought actually we were going to get to it. Yeah, here are the rules, but before we get, to, uh, yeah, let me talk about the rules right now. So here are the rules, and they're in section 15.8. The guidelines for state assignment. There's really two of them to try and uh, minimize the next state equations, and then there's one. Okay, so so these these rules are kind of confusing, and what's more, uh, you don't even know what adjacent state assignments means yet. So when we talk about adjacent state assignments here, uh, sorry, I'll see if I can. Oh yeah, it won't work. Okay, well anyway, whatever. So when we talk about adjacent state assignments, what do we mean? Here's what we mean. We we're if we're doing a little if what we do is we we want to do assignments that only differ by a single variable. So we kind of use so if we if we don't have too many flip-flops, we can use a k-map. And if we put the states in the and if we make the axis of the k-map the the flip-flops then our state assignments can be the boxes, and if we have adjacent boxes, then uh, those are adjacent assignments. So here are the rules. Two rules have to do with our, our flip-flop equations, and one has to do with the output. So states that have the same next state should get adjacent assignments. All right, so let's look at that. So what's what would be an example of that? Okay, let's look at this, Well, or even this one. So... Um, so you could say that, uh, so, okay, so, so, uh, where's a good example? I don't know. So here's, yeah, I don't know. This is maybe not good. How about here? We'll, we'll look at this one. So um, A has D and C. 
so yeah okay so uh so b and b and f they they have f and h and f and b so at least they have the same f assignment so you might think well maybe b and f should be uh adjacent um and and then if you look at the next rule where it is uh here states with states uh States that are the next states of the same state should have adjacent assignments. Uh, that I that, there's a mistake on that one. Okay, states that are states that are the next states of the same state should get adjacent assignments. Okay, so what we just looked at here was okay. So f, f uh, so. Uh, what did I see? So, like in this case, F and B, F and B are the are the next states of state F. So we should try and give F and B adjacent assignments. Okay, C and A are the next states of E. So we should try and give C and A, and then A and E are the next states of D. So we should try and give A and E adjacent assignments. Uh, so those are that's the second rule. The second rule tends to be a lot easier to, to identify and to implement. Um, because states that have the same next state, unless they have different outputs, are often uh, eliminated. All right. And anyway, and then finally our, our rule, states with the same outputs should have JSON assignments. So you take these rules, and as best you can, you create a K-map with, with your flip-flop as your variables, and you then try and assign your states based on the flip-flop. And I... I'll show that to you later. I think I have a problem where I where I actually did that, and I'll I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate it. Um, but that's that's the guidelines. Okay, let's back up. Um, so let's see. Um, so sometimes if you have, sometimes you can you may be able to eliminate states uh, uh, because you have don't cares. So that, that actually is one way to consider it. And then um, um, so it, this could be true for next states for given inputs or even outputs for given, in, uh, given states. One other consideration is sometimes we, uh, like when we're doing programmable logic with a CPLD or an FPGA, we may have a bunch of flip-flops hanging around on our, on our chip that we're not using anyway. And in that case, sometimes we can find that it's a lot more convenient to, uh, in, to instead of doing the minimum number of flip flops, we can we can uh, we can use more flip flops than we need. In fact, we can use a flip flop for every state. So let's say we have six states, or well, in this case, say four states. So then we would have four flip flops, but the you know, and we call them A, B, C, D. But the way we work it out is, for state S0, A would be on, and all the others would be off. For state S1, the only one on would be B. For state S2, the only one on would be C. And for state S3, the only, on, only one on would be D. So even though you're using more flip-flops, because all the, others, all the, all the other uh, flip-flops are always zero unless they're the active state, it can, uh, it can simplify your logic, and it can reduce the number of logic cells that are required, or sometimes it can even speed up propagation delays because you have less calculations to do, uh, and uh, and so you may be able to uh, drive things directly from the flip flop. Uh, so there are a number. So potentially this one hot state assignment uh, can be a good way to go, and especially when you're using programmable logic that already has a lot of built-in flip flops. Okay, so. Um, so I think that pretty much concludes, uh, you know, pretty much what I wanted to cover today. Um, and um, so, uh, so this pretty well takes care of, of, of chapter uh, 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 15. And uh, so we just have a few more chapters left to do. We will have covered the whole book. And and some of these later chapters uh, are, are, you know, we're, there's, there's a, there's not a tremendous amount of information in them, so we can cover them fairly quickly. Um, 
Okay, what else? I think um, I think that's probably all I wanted to say. So we'll, we'll we'll I'll stop this recording and I'll post it and uh, then um, and uh, then I'll uh, we'll keep going. We'll do another one uh, uh, on Friday. So we'll talk to you later.